Our second example here, while we're mixing things up a little bit, notice that the angle is up here. We're given this side right here and we want to know y and h. Here might not be a bad idea to write which side is the opposite side, which side is the adjacent side to keep things straight. So since the angle is over here, this now becomes the adjacent side, so let's label it, adjacent side. And over here, this is opposite the angle, so let's call this the opposite side. And notice that the opposite side is given, the adjacent side is not. We're looking for that. So since we're looking for the adjacent side, and we do not know the hypotenuse, hmm, what should we use? So normally, looking for the adjacent side, we're thinking about the cosine, but to use the cosine, you also have to know the hypotenuse, which is not known. So we probably want to use the tangent, because the tangent relates the opposite to the adjacent, and if the angle is known, we should be able to do that in uh, use the tangent here. So, by definition, the tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so in this case, the opposite side is 20, and the adjacent side is the unknown that we're looking for, which is y. So that means we can solve that equation for y. So we can move the y over here and the tangent down there. So that means that y now becomes 20 divided by the tangent of theta. And since we know the angle theta, which is 30 degrees, we can say that y is equal to 20 divided by the tangent of 30 degrees. And then all we have to do is grab our calculator. And so we can take 20 divided by the tangent of 30. And that is 34.6 degrees. So in this case, oh, no, that's not degrees here. That's actually the length, because we're given the length here. So it would be 34.6. So y equals 34.6, and notice that they did not give us units, so we just write down the number. Now we have to find h. So since we know the opposite side, we know the angle, to find h, opposite side is related to the sine, we can use the sine in that case. So we can say that the sine of theta, by definition, is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Since we're looking for the hypotenuse, we can then say that h is equal to the opposite side divided by the sine of theta, and then we plug in the numbers that we know. Opposite side is 20, and we take the sine of 30 degrees. Notice that the sine of 30 is easy. That's 1 half. So this is equal to 20 divided by 1 half. So that means 40. So because we divide by 1 half, the same as multiplying times 2. So therefore, we found h, and we found, found y. Again, a good thing to do is if the angles are... If the triangle is drawn in a strange way and the angles are given to you in a strange way, you may want to label the sides, which one is the adjacent side, which one is the opposite side, so you can find the correct trigonometric functions. And that's how we do that.